All right, in our previous video, we modeled all of these components on the frame. And up to this point, we're using um, the simple extrude option. In this video, we're going to now cover uh, revolve, sweep, and then in the next video, we'll go over loft. So getting started, we're going to focus on a part that needs to be revolved. Now we're going to fo focus on this what we're calling uh, end cap. So we have one on the bottom and then we have one on the top. In order to create this, I need to trace some geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and hide some things here that I don't need. I'll go ahead and hide my parts just so they aren't confusing here. And I also have a plane that's here, plane three. So let me find plane three in here and hide that as well. And what I'm going to be doing is tracing over top of the uh, bike frame. So we have the frame sketch. And I'm going to, that, that was created on the top plane. So I'm going to create another sketch and use the top plane. So I'm going to zoom up here, click on the top plane. And I'm going to trace over this element here, just half of it. So I'm going to use the line tool and just reference these points and make them co coincident to those. Just connecting the dots here. And on this one, I want to connect to the midpoint and then finish the shape by attaching it back at the, the point of origin there. Now I have a closed region that I can now revolve. So I'm going to click on the check mark. If I need to, I can hide. Let's go ahead and keep that there. We'll just uh, try to revolve with the sketch turned on. So I'm going to use the revolve tool now. And the first thing it needs to know is what face or region you want to revolve. So I'm going to click the region I just created. Now it needs to know the revolve axis. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. So now I can choose this center line as the revolve axis. And just like that, you get a revolved part. So what it did is revolve that area around this center point, and it creates that shape. So using that knowledge, we're going to create another cap up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark to accept that new part. And I'm going to focus up here. You can use the same sketch if you want to. Go ahead and get back inside that sketch. So that was uh, sketch 5 for me. So I want to turn that sketch back on. Get inside there and I'm going to now trace this upper cap area. So I'm going to click here to start and connecting the dots, just go around the perimeter, and then the midpoint, and then connect back to the point of origin there. So I have a closed region. I can now revolve that. So I'm going to go back to the Revolve tool. It already re uh, selected that since that's what I was look working on, but I can go ahead and remove that if it selects the wrong thing. I'm just going to remove that and select and I need to now turn on the eyeball, make sure it's visible. So sketch 5 is visible in my drawing. Yours could be a different number depending on how many sketches you've made. So you just want to make sure that that's visible. And I'm going to select that area. Let's see if I can select it. Oop, there we go. So you want face of sketch 5 and you want to make sure that that's Correctly outlined there, and then go to the revolve axis option, choose that center line, and now you've created your top cap there. So you have a bottom and a top cap. Click the check mark, and let's just go ahead and zoom out and see what we have so far. So far everything is looking great. Everything's lined up with our sketch and everything is 3D modeled with parts. So far so good. 
I'm going to go ahead and hide the parts. And the next thing we're going to focus on is this tube here, which obviously is going to be curved. So I'm going to use a circle profile, and I'm going to be using the sweep option to sweep along this curve. That's the goal. First thing I need to do, to do is create a sketch plane that is perpendicular to this curve. And it seems easier than it actually is to do that. So if I wanted to do that, I would need to get into the sketch. So we have the frame sketch. And try, try to draw a line. I would use construction geometry from somewhere on the point of this curve perpendicular and it doesn't give me the option for a right angle off of this curve. I've tried this already. I know it's, it doesn't work. So you can't get a perpendicular or a right angle constraint off of a curve, which is what I would need in order to be able to draw perpendicular to this curve. So the method we used prior to get uh, a sketch plane in the right orientation is not going to work. But let's go ahead and check and see what our options are. I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark. We're done with that sketch. Let's get into the plane tool and view what other options we might have. So we've already used the plane point. If we knew uh, the plane point connects an existing plane to a point in the drawing, we used the line angle which worked for the other drawings we did. Um, point normal three-point and mid-plane are not going to work. But curve point, that's the option that we want. So this allows you to place a drawing plane at the end or on a point of a curve, and it's a two-step process. You select the curve or the point first. So I'm going to cl click on the, the curve first. And then you're choosing the point where you want your um, drawing plane to intersect. So I'm going to choose this midpoint here. As soon as I click on that, a drawing plane appears and it's perfectly perpendicular to that point on the curve, which is exactly what I need in order to start drawing. So again, let me just review that. I'll go ahead and remove this. So the in, it needs two entities, a curve and a point. You, you can select whichever you want first. So this time I'll select the point. So I have one in, entity, then it needs to know the curve as well. So I'm going to click on the curve. And there I've generated a drawing plane. So I'm going to click the check mark to accept that plane, and then start a sketch using that new plane. And I'm, I just need to model a simple circle. So I'm going to go to the circle tool and zoom in. And no matter where I try to reference something, I don't get anything that I can snap to. So I need to use the use tool in order to reflect some geometry into my current sketch plane. So I need to click on the center line. And then I can either reference the, this line or this line. Either one would work to give me an outside diameter for my circle. So I'll click on this line here. So now I can create a circle using these new points. I want to make it coincident to the center. And then I'll drag it out to the other point on the outside. So you can see it's not quite lined up, but it's close enough. And you'll see as we we model it in 3D space, it will pretty much line up exactly. All right, so now we're ready to try our first sweep. So I'm going to accept the sketch, and then I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to choose the sweep tool. 
Now the sweep tool needs a face and then it also needs a path. So I'm going to select the face first. Actually I may need to delete those guidelines. Let's see what happens if I select these two faces. And then I'm going to click on the sweep path. So I'll click on the red here and then choose the path. Oh, it actually works. So you don't need to really get rid of that geometry. Sometimes that internal geometry does affect the sweep, but this time it didn't. So you need to choose both halves of the circle and then choose the path to sweep along. Pretty simple. All right, we're going to accept the new part and then we're going to enable the parts that we need in order to split this. There we go, now it generated. So I need to reveal part two, which is my seat post, and then part five, nope, part seven, four, let's see, where is that part? Three, there we go. Now I need to split it with both of these parts. So this will be a two-step process. So I'm going to go to the split tool, choose this part, choose an entity to split with. I'm going to choose this cylinder over here. Click the check mark. So I have a little part over here that I can just delete. Part number eight. I'm going to select it, right click, and choose delete. Click the check mark. Oh, that deleted the whole part. Never mind. Let me go back a step. Let's see what happened here. So I have part seven. The orbit here. So I should be safe to delete that part, part seven. Hmm. For some reason it wants to delete the rest of the part. Oh no, they did. There it worked. Maybe I selected the wrong part. So now I have part 7 and I deleted the the extra part. So once it deletes and it doesn't interfere with the current part, you know it's safe to move on to the next split. So I'm going to go go to the split tool, split the same part this time I choose the entity of the seat post and this may create an issue because no it shouldn't let's just try it see what happens click on the outside and we've created two parts part 7 should still be the same that's the part we want to keep I'll go ahead and just hide part 8 to make sure that's what we want to get rid of so yeah, I'm just going to view right inside there. Reveal part 8 and then hide it. Yep, that's the part I want to get rid of. So I'm going to try to select part 8, right click delete, see what happens when I click the check mark. Okay, everything worked beautifully. Very good. All right, now we're ready to move on to the most difficult part, which is this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and continue with that in the next video.